Hello and welcome to Health Journal's Well Series. I'm Brian Freer and today I'm excited to introduce you our guest, Linda Cooper. Linda Cooper is an award-winning television host, executive producer, content creator, featuring worldwide travel, luxury lifestyle, and most recently, healthy living. Linda is interviewing the brightest scientific minds in the world of health and longevity in her interview series titled, The New 100 Longevity Campaign. Hello, Linda. Tell us about your journey. What inspired you to cover the topic of longevity and health? Yes, well, um, I have a BA in broadcasting. I am a lifestyle TV host. And um, for almost two decades now, I've been featuring topics like shopping and travel and spa and fitness and um, luxury travel was my latest one, uh, which actually is a national show, Travel Time with Linda. And um, when COVID hit, um, everyone was like, you know, stunned and then pivoted. And I made lemonade out of lemons, featuring a topic that was a side hobby of mine for years. And that topic was longevity. I was reading everything I possibly could on the subject matter. And I felt that the scientific community just wasn't sharing their information optimally with the mainstream. And also I was told in the past when I, when I tried to feature this topic before, I was told it wasn't mainstream enough. So I was like, the timing is ripe. And so I went for it and everything just fell into place. When things are right, everything just kind of happens seamlessly and organically. And that's exactly what happened. In my experience, often what happens is that the mainstream needs to catch up with the latest research. So longevity is kind of a luxury. So I could see how you could, you know, move towards that. Let me just stop you right there. Um, I think longevity, that term has been like kind of, it's a broad term. And so you're going to start hearing the term cellular health. If you haven't already, everyone is um, going to start talking about the importance of cellular health. And what that means is to be able to optimize your health span and your lifespan. And in this um, medicine system that we're currently in, um, it's very important to be the CEO of your own health because no one's going to do that job better than you. And so I was reading up on how, ways that I personally could optimize my health span and lifespan. And I thought this information was so incredibly valuable that I had to feature it. We're super excited to have you as a contributor to have you um, as part of our Well series. So I'm tell honest. me about some, <laughs> thank you, likewise. So tell me about some of the guests that you've had on. Oh my goodness. Um, these are the brightest scientific minds, world renowned, um, scientists that each in their own area of expertise and um, each episode features a various topic each one is just mind-blowing things that you just have never heard before and um, again it's just so incredibly valuable so like I could go down the list there's 10 episodes in all um, Dr. Sandra Kaufman with the Kaufman Protocol, she um, was fabulous. She was episode one um, and she's all about phytoceuticals, nutraceuticals that you can take to mm -hmm. optimize your health span and lifespan. And some of the things that she was saying was like, whoosh, I had no idea. I mean, a lot of people even, okay, here's a for instance. <laughs> um, I went to my ophthalmologist because I wanted to uh, take my driver's uh, test and I wanted to make sure that it didn't say on my license needs glasses. And Why was that an issue? I am over 50 and everyone around me is like, just wait, just wait. It's going to happen to you too. <laughs> There's chronological age and biological age. Um, and I think that some of it is genetics because my mother is, I mean, she looks incredible for her age. She easily looks, you know, you know, 15 years younger than easily 15, 20, 25 years younger than she actually is, which, um, I, you know, feel, you know, really blessed to have those genetics. Um, but I think a lot of it has to do with um, cellular health, which is mm -hmm. to be able to do what you can to increase that and, you know, to be able to, you know, do all of the things that we're talking about on the longevity series. I wanted to make this series like for the average person to be able to inform them about all these incredible advancements happening right now in these different areas. And so, um, 
one of the things that Sandy said was um, Russia has studies on carnosine eye drops. And so carnosine eye drops are available in Russia like at the local CVS. Okay, they're very common. They've done studies like 20,000 Russians and what these do is prevents cataracts or actually if you have cataracts it reverses cataracts and nobody knows i've never heard of that you and can so, get these otc over the counter uh, well it is but it's like i when i was doing my research i was like okay there's two brands and they pretty much promote them for pets for pets having cataracts not for humans and actually if you go to um, nchb or ncbi ncbi you can look at the past uh, clinical trials that they have on the subject matter, and it shows that they prevent and reverse cataracts, but just nobody knows about or talks about it. And when I spoke to my ophthalmologist, he had no idea. And I was like, but that's what I'm saying. It's, it's like, you really have to do your own research. And I'm not saying anything against the doctors, but they're very much, you know, tunnel vision to what they're doing and not really looking at the bigger picture and that's what is your responsibility you know for your own health to be able that's to right. do yeah most physicians are only looking within their purview and yes. so it is up to us to be advocates for our own health you know we always say it's so important to have a family practice physician who's overseeing everything yes but, that, um, even that still doesn't do it for you because okay so I'm gonna share with you another episode. Um, Dr. Jason Williams with the Williams Cancer Institute, and he is a world-renowned oncologist. He's been doing cutting-edge cancer treatments that have been non-invasive using cryoablation with immunotherapy. And he's been doing what is happening now in clinical trials. He was doing that back in 2004, so he's like light years ahead. He is practicing currently in Mexico City because he cannot practice here because he's not doing the cutting, the burning or the poisoning that you do what, what's been known for cancer treatments. He is um, putting a cocktail of different drugs and it's very, I mean, you have to watch, it's episode six, I believe. And um, mm -hmm. that episode was the first time and I've never cried in two decades on camera, I actually cried during his episode with what he was sharing because I was so horrified and so blown away. And I kept in the majority of that, I just kind of had them edit out the part where I was boohooing ugly tears <laughs> and then regained my composure um, to keep that in because it needed to be powerful to showcase the catalyst is needed for change and i was so were his so were his methods outside of the like the accepted protocols well what the accepted protocols are he doesn't cut poison or burn there's no radiation there's no chemotherapy um what he does is and um he attacks the cancer targeting where the cancer is located and he can actually do this anywhere in the body except for the brain um, and basically um, doing a series of injections with this cocktail of drugs that are specific for that person it's a very detailed thing and it happens in in mexico city and he's curing stage four cancer patients with this treatment and um, he can actually say that because he's been doing these treatments for over five years, which is that time frame where you hasn't ha gone back into remission. I know that a lot of people will be very interested to see that um, episode up, yes. on, um, up on the site. Yes, so, I, I can go on and on and on yeah. because only because it is, I, I'm not just saying this, the show is bigger than me. The show is bigger than, you know, the platform is, it's bigger than everything it's the most um valuable information that i've ever covered and i feel that it will be so incredible to have everyone on board once they they hear this information um and are open to hearing that there's more out there i think that the, there's that's one cog in the wheel there's multiple cogs in the wheel but but that's one it's like um it's it's been not shared optimally and i was blaming the scientists but then i i realized that it wasn't their fault one more episode which was incredibly yeah. valuable and it's another chronic 
disease that um, like it's the top six in the United States and that's Alzheimer's. And um, I interviewed Dr. Rudy Tanzi, who is like the most <laughs> impressive person um, I could, I mean, on paper and just in person as well, but he's also a New York Times bestselling author with Deepak Chopra. He wrote Super Brain, co-wrote with Deepak Super Brain and several other books. And he has spent his lifelong work um, finding the cure for Alzheimer's. And he has had, I'm not joking when I say this, proof of concept for curing Alzheimer's for over 20 years. Um, and okay, so consider this. For heart disease or for diabetes, we have a simple blood test to have early detection. But we don't have that in place for Alzheimer's until it's too late. When the onset occurs, you can't do anything about that to treat it. And so he has had a simple blood test actually ready to go, waiting for funding. And that's another um, cog in the wheel that was what I was hearing over and over again, which I was unaware of as, you know, the average person. But during the series, I was hearing like a broken record, this same exact catchphrase, waiting for clinical trials when we receive funding. And these scientists are forced to put on their salesman's hat to get the funding because right. the way the system is set up right now, to be able to do a clinical trial with the FDA, because that's how you get approval is through the FDA, they have a hefty user fee of over of $2 million, or it could be even more at this point. Um, so to be able to play with the big boys, that is how they are able to, well, they haven't been able to do it. They are spinning their wheels. And I'm frustrated just, I was hearing about it pretty much with every guest, it, it was horrible. Yeah, research and clinical trials is notoriously expensive. It needs to be done right, but um, but there definitely needs to be more research, especially in Alzheimer's. My grandmother had uh, dementia, and uh, and it's just heartbreaking to watch the decline of a loved one, and um, and you know, and then and then see them you know eventually just lose their their dignity, and um, and that's just you know that's. It's a very difficult situation, but why do you think that the average person is so in the dark about, you know, these advanced therapies and discoveries being made in the science of aging? Well, consider this, um, because um, just so that you know, the reversing the aging process is part of the plan and most of the experts that I interviewed because it goes along with curing that age-related disease. Um, everything is about inflammation of the body. And, and if you do away with inflammation in the body, then it not only can optimize your health span and lifespan, it can also reverse whatever that uh, the effects of that disease is. And with that correct drug that they're trying to get through the proper channels to eventually cure it. But, but the common theme was always, you know, curing, you know, inflammation in the body or what Dr. Sanders Kaufman called inflammaging, <laughs> um, but every single one of them. And so that was the one thing that I kept hearing over and over. So in answer to your question, the reason why is if you have, if you can actually ask yourself this, in the past couple decades, what cures have come to market to cure any disease? I can't think of one. Thank you. And the reason for that is because the powers that be of the people that are controlling that narrative are very happy with that status quo. Um, and I'm not talking the NIH and the NIA and even the director of the FDA all want to see the change happening. If you go onto their sites, um, they're trying to, you know, help these scientists and do grants and funding as much as they possibly can. But, but a lot of it is um, their hands are tied. And so that's why these scientists are forced to put the, their sales hat on to get from the private sector funding. But the reason why is because um, there is not this push to cure disease, only to 
put a Band-Aid on the symptoms. I like to say I, I know a little bit about a lot of things. <laughs> so anything that was told to me by all the experts, I always Googled afterwards, okay, um, on, because there's, you know, the clinical trials and the medical journals and all of that is documented. The average person just doesn't go there. They just don't know, like PubMed, is a great resource, but people just don't know to go there. And a lot is documented. What I was sharing about the carnosine eye drops. Another factor that uh, the cancer um, episode shared, Dr. Jason Williams said that if you take 200 micrograms of selenium a day, that can prevent you from getting breast cancer and prostate cancer. Yeah, I think the bottom line is that nobody is in a better position to take care of you than yourself. In fact, um, Dr. Kevin Perot, I believe it's episode seven, he has a biomarkers test um, for his company called Open Cures. And you can test your biomarkers to see like the, your cellular health. Okay, so nobody's really doing this on a, on a level that that's this extensive. You sign up for the service. He um, organizes a plebotomist to come to your home, draws blood, it's all packed in dry ice, sent back to his laboratory, and um, it's processed, uh, it's, it's very detailed. And one of the things that came out that I was unaware of was my phospholipids were very low. And that was the only thing I had to worry about, and your phospholipids are very important. And so now I know I should take a phospholipid panel uh, supplement. And so. It's, it's really great, again, to, to be in charge of your own health because no one is gonna be that detailed. Even if you found the most incredible general medicine practitioner, they are not going to do that for you. So. Right, right. Yeah, and going back to um, the, the PubMed and, and researching um, that on your own, I mean, a lot of people just you know, don't have the time to, uh, to go through PubMed, or they don't have the scientific background to be able to make sense of the right. analysis and the research. And that's why it's so important for, you know, people like you and myself to talk to scientists and help curate that information for them. A hundred percent. And also not be afraid to ask the questions that everyone's wanting to know. I'm not afraid to sound stupid by asking something. Right. But then there's one more um, thing that the public is unaware of. You asked me why we're in the dark. And this only came out during the process of my interviewing the experts and um, realizing that I heard the same thing over and over again is that inside FDA CBER department, it's a very antiquated system. It's like curing one disease at a time per drug. And in this case, a lot of um, the chronic diseases can be a one, not a one size fits all, but it can affect multiple diseases with one drug. And so what they've been saying is, okay, well, I have to choose one disease, get it to market, then once it, it's at, in market, then it can be treating, you know, ALS and all these other factors. But the problem with that is that the healthcare system won't allow for that. They won't pay for that. And so these people would have to pay out of pocket for treating anything other than what it was designated for. Right. They call that off label, I, I believe. Yeah. When you're, when you're prescribing a drug for something that was other than its original intended purpose is off label. And and you get that, you know, that, that happens all the time. That's the one thing about um, drugs. I was um, on the National Institutes of Health um, on their website uh, a few months back. And I was just interested in, well, how many, how many drugs have been recalled over the past five years? And they have a document that's available and it's 88 pages long with That just goes to show hundreds. you that, yes, because I'll tell you why. Um, those pharmaceutical companies that placed, you know, the user fees and all of that and pushed it through, it's about what is being focused on. And um, it's not about the cures, it's about, you know, the drugs to put the band-aids on things. And, you know, oftentimes it could create more issues. Um, but that's the pro that is definitely a huge part of the problem. And I'm hoping that 
it'll all these cogs in the wheel will eventually start being removed for the benefit of everyone because um that's all that these i mean these these scientists are trying to do is to to better our lives and it's just really it's it's hard and for season two, I want to be able to showcase um, different treatments or things that are available that are not really shared. It's you've heard the term biohacking. Um, you know, yeah, well, <laughs> I, yeah, I have, and and I believe one of your episodes uh, goes into that. Yes, well, um, I featured katsu, which. Uh, was the best kept secret in biohacking when I was interviewing uh, the founder and he actually was trained and learned from Dr. Yoshiaki Sato in Japan and it was a long process to be able to bring it to the United States but he was sharing that the all of the agencies the CIA and all of like the army the navy pro athletes all of them are using katsu um, but it's it's like been like the best kept secret until like now. <laughs> so katsu in Japanese means additional pressure. And what Dr. Sato found is by limiting the blood flow in the limbs, it creates this neurological effect in the brain. And it's incredible for your longevity, for optimizing your heart health and sleep. And I mean, pretty much everything across the board. And, um, and of course your ath athletic abilities to enhance that. I'm very interested in watching that episode and learning, you know, a little bit more about the mechanics behind that. Yes. But one of the episodes that I found extremely fascinating was uh, Dr. Michelle Poulain discussing blue zones. Yes. So I was hoping that you could briefly uh, fill us in on what the idea behind blue zones and, um, and why they matter. Absolutely. Um, well, blue zones was one of those topics that I was researching for years and, I, and finding everything I could on the subject matter. Um, and when I was looking at the information that was shared, I found a common denominator that all five blue zone regions had. And what a blue zone region is, is a, a cluster of centenarians living in that uh, area of the country. And so there's um, Sardinia actually was the first blue zone that was documented. And then later on, it was, you know, Nicoya Peninsula in Costa Rica, and so on and so forth. So there were five, but then even if it wasn't stamped a blue zone, there are other clusters um, where centenarians live that um, I also looked at. And I, I actually was trying to see if it also shared that same common denominator and it did. And I was like, oh my gosh. So I shared that information with Dr. Bill Andrews, who was kind of like my pseudo show advisor. Um, he and I get along great. And he was helping me um, kind of hone down my guest list of who to feature and helping you know me. Because I have to say this, a lot of the scientific community are very hard on each other. They, they're, you know, it's a very tight knit group and they're very judgmental of one another. And so it had to be, every expert had to be well respected in their area of expertise because I can't tell you how many times I heard, oh, well, who else will you be having on the show? <laughs> so I had to be very careful. So, but back to, to what he said, he's like, you have to get Dr. Michelle Poulain on the show because um, you should talk to him about your theory. And so, I did and I was very careful because this is like you know his lifelong work and I wasn't sure if it was something that he had even considered and he was very open to hearing about it and very interested in what I found and what that is is each one of the regions had a or has a geothermal natural resource in its living environment so if you can imagine um, the benefits that you get soaking in a hot spring it has these incredible trace minerals that are being absorbed uh, by your biggest organ, the skin. Um, and the way you feel, if you are consuming um, the food and drinking the water affected by these heat shock proteins, which are inside the geothermal resource itself, you're benefiting huge. And so it was not showcased on 
in anything, <laughs> any article, any book. Sorry, Dan Buettner, but <laughs> it, it hadn't been up until speaking with um, Dr. Poulain on my show and, and me bringing it up. And he was very open to hearing more about it. And, you know, the longevity aspects, um, which were really interesting in Sardinia, which also wasn't, you know, broadly shared, was that the men in Sardinia live as long as the women, which is unheard of. Okay, so most of, I mean, like in, in most globally, women outlive men easily like five to six years. That's like across the board, it's always been the case. But in Sardinia, in the neuro region, and Villa Grande, which is this beautiful area, which I really want to go to, which um, I want to feature for season three once I'm able to shoot my travel show again. Um, in that region, the men live as long as the women. And so during the show, I asked him, I'm like, OK, so I'm really big on trying. I'm very curious. I want to like learn more. I hadn't heard that um, until the interview. And I said, so tell me this. What, if anything, is different that these men are doing compared to the other centenarian regions that are blue zones? Is there a factor that is very unique to this one region? And he said, in fact, there is. And it, what came out is that these men are shepherds that um, are grazing the land for nine months out of the year with you know their sheep. And when I said to him, oh, well, ding, 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 that explains it. He goes, yeah, because, you know, they didn't have to deal with, he's a man. <laughs> he's like, they didn't have to deal with the stress of being around, you know, their wives nagging them and the <laughs> different things. They just, they, I was like, oh my goodness, that's not what I was going with. <laughs> that's a good argument for divorce. <laughs> Live longer. Actually, yeah. it's, it's, it's quite the opposite. If you're, you know, men who are married and in, um, healthy relationships tend to live longer and there's probably a number of reasons you know for that but but the thing that really came out which was fascinating um where i the reason why i said ding 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 is because if you are one with the land you are eating the natural resources and drinking the natural water of the region that are affected by these heat shock proteins <laughs> um well hello and then on top of all of that there is a um it's it's actually a plant and it's called cardoon and it's a part of the artichoke variety that that blooms in this region and they use this basically as a thirst quencher or just like a a healthy snack and they snack on it throughout the day so i went ahead and did wild cardoon thistle it's called wild thistle and you can go on to PubMed and, and I went on and sure enough, I found this um, researcher who showed that the longevity factors were huge. And so I was like, everything, it, everything snowballs into the next. There's a reason. But Dr. Poulain and this researcher that I shared this with are very interested in furthering research to see oh. more, to see if those in fact are, you know, deciding factors. Well, we're very excited to uh, to be bringing you on our platform. What does the future hold for you, and um, and where do you plan to take this series going forward? Yes, um, well, I'm definitely wanting to have a season two, and I think I shared previously I, I want to feature more things like katsu, where um, the average person can go ahead and take advantage of something now, not wait for it to come to market. Um, and it's, it's not necessarily a cure, but it's a way to enhance and optimize your health span. Um, and so there's one actually um, incredible tool that I just came across, it's called BrainTap. And that's gonna be an episode for season two, for sure. As you know, we don't use our full brain capacity, not even like a fraction. <laughs> um, we use a very small portion of that. And so if you're brain tapping, you're able to tap into the, the neurological aspects. They also have like light therapy. It's basically a headphones with, with um, a mask and you're closing your eyes, but there's light therapy um, on your ears and on over your eyes. And it's got very specific messaging. Sometimes it could be to pull you into a deeper meditation. Sometimes it could be helping with sleep. 
Other times it could be for weight. There's all different topics that you can choose from, but it takes you to a much deeper level. And so you are optimizing your brain health as well, which I think is really important. Mental health is important and also brain health is important. And so that's something that we can do now and it's a great tool. So I wanna feature more tools that you can utilize now. So rather than just going into the research, going into the actual practice of living longer. Yes. Love it. Yeah. Linda, it's been an absolute pleasure having you and- um, Thank you, it was so I'm, much fun. <laughs> I'm looking forward to, to sharing all of the series. The links to all of the episodes will be in the description. And i um, looking forward to season two and having those. Yes, so I'm, I'm excited to be a contributor. So thank you so much for having me on the Health Journal. Yeah, well, you're welcome.